Uh, I never took an accounting class. I didn't know squat about business, no formal training. So I had to figure all that stuff out on the fly. And some of the things, you know, take a while to figure out and like, huh, I bet you other people struggle with these things too. So I wrote, wrote them down and shared them that way, like about how to do accounting, right. And those kind of things. Oh, wow. But well, that's great information. Holy man. <laughs> yeah. I would For a small it. business. Yeah. I think it is. And, and it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to be a software development company to benefit from it. I don't think. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. Um, a lot of companies, especially now, you know, I know, I know you notice know like the, the uprising of entrepreneurs and, and businesses all over the world, all over America right now. And a lot of times uh, people are still trying to push college, you know, go to college, go to school, which is great. I'm not saying that isn't a negative thing, but the internet made it so easy for people to get information and get that self-knowledge that, you know, some people are smart enough to actually teach themselves because they want it so bad. You know, you got to have that, that hunger for knowledge, that hunger to, for growth, to, to exceed your expectation, not sexy, but exceed that expectation. Yeah. For yourself. And, and I, and I'm seeing that more and more, not just in, including myself, but with my, my business partners, with my clients, with, you know, the people I hang around and we talk about business and laugh and, you know, over beers, <laughs> I, you know, and, and it, and it opens up a, a whole new world in your mind that, wow, this is incredible. I'm a part of this generation where we just imploded with just business ideas. And some of us are becoming, you know, more far more successful than our predecessors. So it, and it's just great to see that and to hear that. And for you to affirm, confirm it is just even better. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's it's exciting times, that's for sure. So what what are some of the companies or businesses that you have worked, uh, if you're able to, you know, the states, a few of them? Yeah, or, sure. You know, so audience can know, like, how 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 successful, how big you guys are now. Yeah, so so some of the, um, the businesses that people, everyone probably in the world might have heard of is like Ford Motor Company, done quite a bit of work for Ford. Um, we used to do work for, um, uh, Chrysler years ago oh, and wow. okay. we've done work for Steelcase. trying to think of other big companies locally, pretty much. Um, and, and then some like really small startups. We, I don't know, you, you probably, cause you live in Grand Rapids, you know, art prize, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Art prize is a cool thing. We built the mobile apps for art prize. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That that's a cool app. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's simple. A, it's not complex. Oh man, that's a fun one to do. We've, yeah, we've built applications in the healthcare space. Um, we've built applications in uh, banking. One of the one that ones we're really proud of is for a company called Ivy Mortgage. On the, um, oh, sorry, Ivy Mortgage. I can't talk about. Never mind. Okay. Um, there's one on the east side of the state that helps people get work their way out of um, financial debt. And they mm -hmm. we built an app for them that ha that helps the process of working through your finances and working to pay off your debt, to renegotiate debt and get out of debt. And we were really proud of the work we did there. Um, there's another company in Boston called um, Neurometrics. They make a little device that you strap on the back of your calf mm -hmm. and then it, it electrically stimulates your muscles and your, um, I guess your whole leg. And we built an app so that you could program the device to, to run for a certain period of time and it would report on the charge state, how much battery charge it had and what level of stimulation and how long and what program and that kind of stuff. So people use this for uh, eradicating pain in other parts of their body. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how this works. It's, it seems kind of like magic. You stimulate right. the muscles in the back of your calf and it takes your back pain away. But it works. Wow. Yeah. So the Amazon reviews on this device are fantastic because people get off their pain meds or reduce from right. like multiple meds to like one med. I so remember. really, really cool way to help people. Wow. So so that that's crazy. I never I didn't think that you did any anything and even though you say your your company did a broad of, of, of spectrums, but for automotive industry and stuff, I was I, I was personally thinking about like Google or you know, uh, some type of big software company, you know, maybe a social media company, uh, because uh, those are several uh, 
yeah, big 500 manufacturers. So that, that that's amazing that you're that you're able to actually say that I accomplished this. And yeah, we we have a few software companies that have been customers, but but mostly not software companies, honestly, because what we're super good at is is software product development, design, mm -hmm. figuring out what to build, running the projects, building it right, testing it well, deploying it. Like that's our specialty. Okay. And software companies tend to have those skills, but it's the companies that make other things where software is a critical part of what they do or what they make, but they're not software companies. They don't have as many of those skills. Right. So we can be a very, very valuable partner for those kind of companies. And then do you offer like long-term services because of, because of the great partnership relationship that you have with these oh, uh, yeah. corporations? Yeah, yeah, we have come, we have clients that we've worked with for years. It's not uncommon for a client to work with us for a while, um, okay. come back, do another project. We sometimes for startups, we help them hire their first employees. We, you know, source them and vet them and train them. And then when we uh, get that first release out the door and the company's launched into the market, they have um, at least a couple of software engineer employee people that they can, uh, that they employ, that they can continue to work with. And we can support and back those folks up. Or if they need to, you know, need to build a bit another thing and they just don't have the capacity, they can come back to us and we can help them out. And you, okay. Oh, wow. That's helpful. Yeah, that's really helpful. Now, those are fun because you're creating a, you're doing more than creating software. You're actually helping build a company. Right. That's pretty much what, yeah. You might as well put put your name on the dotted line of you know part owners our own so and so stakes. Because yeah, <laughs> if I was a savvier business person, we probably would have done that, but we didn't. So. <laughs> and and it's uh your your company, um, you guys corporation should I say is listed as a B corporation. Yeah, we're a B corp. Right. Yeah. Okay, and I've read. Um, oh my God, what was it? Uh, twenty seventeen. You guys were. In, in a Forbes magazine, I want to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have done your homework. Um, uh, that was for the Small Giants Award. That's so, what, yeah. Yep. There's a really great uh, organization called Small Giants that uh, actually runs out of Detroit. They have an excellent conference coming up here in April uh, every year. Anyway, they, they are companies, they bring together companies like ours who, you know, recognize that you can be really good at what you want to do. Mm -hmm. and get better and better and you don't have to just grow like there's no reason to grow for growth's sake so these small giants as they are called um the name comes from a book that a guy named bo burlingham wrote back in 2005 i want to say it was really early on i was it was very influential on me uh he's a great great person um and and that community of like-minded businesses very fun to get together with them at the at the annual summit, but they also do training for leadership development and uh, other kinds of things. Wow. Definitely recommend checking them out. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. And then, and then I, I, I really like because um, that you focus on being uh, diverse in, in your company, um, especially for the female role. I've, I've uh, when I did my research, I noticed that you try to increase the female role of being, you know, in a. I want to. How can I put it? In a leadership type of aspect, and to show that our female, our women are very just as strong as we are mentally, if not stronger. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, we we the first time I tried to do that was probably two thousand. I don't know, eight or nine, maybe. And we failed. We were a very male company. We only had one, maybe two women employees. Mm. And we were probably 20, 30 people at the time. So very, very male dominated. Um, and I tried to get people excited about the idea of diversifying uh, our gender. And I didn't do a very good job of it. And it just, it didn't go anywhere and it, it failed. And then we took that charge back up again in like 2013, 2012, something like that. And that time, uh, having made the mistake the first time around, I was better at getting everybody involved. I was better at explaining why we care about this and how it'll benefit us and why we should do it. And we succeeded that time. And now since that point, it took only three or four years, actually, 
we became about 40% women. And that's where we've wow. remained. 40%. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. Congratulations. And we, <laughs> thank you. And, you know, we did it mostly because this is who we hire. We did it mostly by hiring women developers, which, hmm. you know, there, there are fewer of them, you know, coming out of school than there are men. So it's not right. so easy to do. Right. So you really have to take a fine, a fine what do they say, a fine tooth comb and really get out the, the ones that, that are serious about. Yeah. Yeah. That's you got, you got to fish in different ponds if you want yeah. different results. And that's what we started, <laughs> one of the things we started doing. And so doing, all right, during all the, these, uh, these accomplishments, what was the, the one that wow was the wow factor for you? Uh, you know, when, when the company got to the point where I was seeing things happen that were awesome that I had nothing to do with. Mm. Because that told me that Atomic was more than me. Mm. And, you know, as a founder, when, you know, you, you have to do everything, right, from the get-go. Like, there's no one else there. <laughs> so you're doing all the things. And some of them, you know, you're okay at. Some of them you're great at. Some of them you're not so great at. And then as you grow, you have no choice but to figure out how to delegate and how to trust other people to do things. And I've always been a pretty quick to trust and high trust person. So I picked people who, you know, I thought were shared our values and shared our, our purpose and hired them and then expected a lot from them, just like I expect a lot from myself. And put them in positions of um, leadership and authority. And they did really well, by and large, like really, really well. And so when things started happening that were great and really cool and different that I had nothing to do with, that was my signal of like, holy moly, this is really great. Like, I didn't have <laughs> to do that cool thing. And I might not even have thought of that cool thing. Right. And yet, here it is. It's it's being done and we're growing and we're we're better now than we were. And that's that, that that was kind of a slow motion sort of a thing. It wasn't like one like aha moment, but right, right. It was very, very probably the most satisfying thing. Because it's it, it's almost like your your vision took a a life of its own. And yeah. Started reproducing, yeah. you know, benefiting from, you know, just from a uh, sit down in the office with your best friend and drinking a cold one to, you know, we're successfully. <laughs> yes, we're successfully that's where it started. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, definitely it's not a, where it ended. It's a, it's a great, man, it's a dope way to, to sit back and laugh about like, man, remember when we, you know, because it, that's that good feeling that, that I understand that you're talking about. I wanted to, you know, ask you about your because you do a great work in the community especially with the youth you know hence myself um i've, I've noticed you're very you and your you and your wife are very into you know building young minds and so what are some of the things that you have done within the community you know the 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 things that we've really been uh, drawn to for the last 10 15 years are uh the problem of homelessness and mm. especially when it over when it intersects with our LGBTQ LGBTQ youth, and sad sad to say that problem intersects because a lot of times the reason that our LGBTQ youth are homeless is that they uh, come out to their parents and they get kicked out of the house. And that's uh, mm. a very very sad thing, obviously. And it's a particularly vulnerable time and they're in a um, precarious state. So we've supported, um, you know, charitable organizations that work on that problem, like HQ and 311 Youth Housing that have merged a couple of years ago into something called AYA Youth Collective. I do. Oh, um, wow. Really great work there. Um, and I think as part of that, Mel, you know, a lot of the youth that uh, we serve at, 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 a at AYA are from Grand Rapids. And they're from the poorer parts of Grand Rapids, which in Grand Rapids means they're mostly black. And that I think was part of my experience of just realizing what a, a terribly segregated city we still live in. We are living with the um, results of you know decades of redlining and discrimination and all of the bad side effects of that. 
So and so this has become more and more important to me in the last five, seven years, I'd say. I I started by saying, like, I, I'll take a meeting with, with any uh, uh, Black student or entrepreneur um, to give advice or to just listen or to see if we can help them in some fashion. And that was kind of passive. Like, I waited for them to come to me. And then... Um, and I made some, some actually some good friends out of that. It was very interesting and started seeing like some differences of the people who I knew. And when George Floyd was murdered in the summer of 2020, I said, I got to be more active about this. So I started reaching out and hanging around different places. This is how you and I met at the Grab Awards dinner. Oh that man, was, it was great. Shout out to it was a cool, Bill Robinson, my brother. Yeah, yeah. That was it great. Was, that was beautiful. That was a really, really well done event. And it's an example of, it's that fishing in different ponds strategy I mentioned that helped us hire more women. Like I'm not going to have more black folks in my personal and professional networks unless I go to different places. Cause if I keep going to the places I go to, it's all white guys and mostly <laughs> men. And that has been a hugely rewarding thing in my life to meet uh, some people I wouldn't have known before. And as you guess, they're all very interesting people. They've done cool stuff. And they've, you know, done things and accomplished things despite still living in a, a society that has got a lot of systemic racism in it. And it makes that harder, which mm -hmm. makes them even more extraordinary pe as people. And so what, you know, since I retired or since I stepped into the CEO, the, stepped out of the CEO job three years ago, and since I retired a couple of months ago now, I have more and more time and I'm feeling very much drawn, called, if you will into working on this problem of segregation and racial equity or lack thereof in Grand Rapids. Wow. That's, do, do you feel like that'll put you at a, at a pull a push and pull point because of, you know, of who you are, especially of, of what you accomplished with that. I don't, I don't want to say have any backlash because, you know, we live in a world where, Oh my God! You, well, I don't know if you witnessed uh, in Tennessee how three yeah. out of the you know two uh, representatives were suspended because of their young and their ethnicity, and so that right there you know shows that how how far politics will go, especially on the right wing, will go to you know silence a person. So is that yeah. any type of fear that you might have? I haven't run into that yet. And I guess it would be crazy. I mean, I, I don't disagree with your analysis. I think that could certainly be the case, but I haven't seen it yet. And I'm not, I guess, maybe naive, but I'm not scared about it. Mm -hmm. I'm more focused on the positives and the friends I have now that I wouldn't have had before. And I, I also am very much a fan of um, using business and, and companies as a force for good. And so one, one way that these two ideas intersect is mentoring uh, African-American entrepreneurs and trying to help them with capital raise and give them business advice. And in fact, I'm organizing a, a really interesting event. There's a, a business school in Chicago that pr provides a combination, a very unusual combination, super practical business um, training with based on biblical values, a very unusual combo. Mm called the Joseph Business School. And so uh, Scott Welch and Dave Beelan and I, a couple of my friends, are bringing the Joseph Business School to Grand Rapids at the end of uh, April, beginning of, of May, so that, um, and we've invited a bunch of our friends to come and learn about the Joseph Business School, because I think it could be a huge, powerful tool for uh, uh, African-American entrepreneurs who are who have a business already or who are ready to launch their business. They have a very, very focused, concentrated uh, course on entrepreneurship. And they, they uh, the Joseph Business School has recently been able to take away the tuition for this. So there's no hurdle. Wow. Yeah, it's it's super exciting. I'm a I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, let's talk Seriously. afterwards. I'll tell you more about it. That's, but this is exactly why we're, why we're bringing them here is I need more people, especially people who are connected to those black uh, business owners and entrepreneurs to know about it. Um, and we're also going to try to help them with some fundraising so that they can build their, their capacity to serve more people. That's a bit, it don't even sound like you're retired <laughs> just to put it all in spectrum. You sound like you're yeah, just, yeah. 
you know, you just went, all right, I started this business, now I'm going to start something else. Yeah. Uh, man, you're, 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 um, you surprised me. I'm not going to even lie <laughs> to you. You really have surprised me. Um, it, it's amazing, uh, especially of the work you have done in the beginning. Um, like I was saying, when I was doing my research, I was like, this is incredible. And just because to me, 22 years is, is a long time, but to do as much as has been done is it, it, phenomenal. And then to be so in tune within your community as far as, you know, helping the youth, uh, making sure that, you know, we have growth and development not just ec economically, but mentally as well, because that builds that mental uh, bridge that we need to help heal ourselves because we're yeah. facing so much at uh, uh, negative and adversities in our society nowadays is that, you know, you getting pretty soon people really get tired of watching the news because it's always about somebody stealing, somebody's being murdered or something going on on Capitol Hill where they're trying to push out, you know, uh, good agendas for for the people. And to hear you, you know, I, yeah, I hear all the negative stuff, but however, I still got my cape, I still got my boots on, and I'm still for to be super, <laughs> super in this society that we live in. I love it. I really do. Yeah. I mean, you think about the, the human capital in Grand Rapids that we aren't taking advantage of, just from like a business and a community thriving perspective, that's just dumb. And then yeah. you think about the human cost of those people who don't have opportunity or who can't get the capital or who can't don't go to college and they can't go to college or they don't get the right sort of vocational training, whatever it might be. Like that is that's where intergenerational poverty comes from. And mm. in fact, the, the mission of the Joseph Business School is to eradicate intergenerational poverty. Oh, wow. That is a battle. That needs to be. Yeah, thank you for that's bringing ambitious. That, up. that that's a that's that's we need to hear that more and more often. It, 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 it's it's something that you know we witnessed. I witnessed yesterday this that type of uh, situation where um, a friend of mine, a friend of a friend, has a business and they did everything they needed to. They have a great product, great service, and they were under undercut because of. I, I'm not too sure, but from my opinion of their skin color and then, and of how how strongly and passionate they was, and they were the best, in my opinion, that gave that uh, that service to. They're they're great. <laughs> this is the, every day they are working on something new about themselves, and that right there shows that um, people like yourself, along with the uh, with that program is looking out for us you know not just for us but for the future of everyone you know for 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 the next generation to come because i always try to understand if you destroy the youth and what's in the future how are you going to create something for the future exactly that is your future <laughs> it's an oxymoron there somewhere it is the yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly but i want to thank you uh Mr. Erickson, man, for for coming on to the show. I, I like I said, you blow my mind, man. I never would have thought that you was this type of individual. I love what I do. This is my passion, and I thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, welcome to Unapologetic Family. Um, we we love having you. We really do. Thanks, Mal. It's been great chatting with you. I enjoyed getting to know you at uh, Grab a little bit. We should get together sometime and share more stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you said, man, I'm always thinking of new ideas, new things. Come on, man. This this, this is who I am. This is what we do here at Unapologetic. Awesome. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you uh, for those who have subscribed. Please leave a comment, share it. It doesn't cost you a thing. And as you can see, man, we're pushing the narrative of becoming better each day. We want you to exceed your expectations, not succeed. And so we thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, we are on all major audio platforms, including iHeartRadio. So I understand a lot of people was hitting me up talking about iHeartRadio. We're on there now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, so make sure you hit that download button. 
and we'll be constantly giving you new information, new feeds on what's to come and of the people who will be on our uh, on the show coming up pretty soon. Uh, but thank you, Mr. Erickson. Of course, we're going to be talking after this, of course, because I need to know more and more about what you're doing, man. You have so much going on, so many gems, and I hope you all are happy that he's on the show, and thank you for being unapologetic. Thanks, Mel.